So welcome back to Not The Homestead. We're back on the job site today doing some electrical work. Uh, the last video we showed you we'd mounted our boxes. We talked about a lot of the things there. So now you'll notice we've actually pulled a bunch of wire. Um, I don't want to call it Romex because Romex is a brand. It's regular building wire. Um, yellow is 12-2. White, which you'll see in some places, is 14-2 or 14-3. So basically back about 20 years ago, the industry decided to color code the wire. So white wire is 14 gauge, yellow wire is 12 gauge, orange wire is 10 gauge. So you'll see what we've done is we've put a handful of receptacles on each circuit and you'll notice that we've run our home run out of the bottom of this receptacle down into the basement. And you know, we're just getting going on this. Uh, some of the unique things here on this build is almost every one of the light fixtures is a fluorescent, what they call a recessed fixture, but it's actually only um, just a little puck that goes up in the ceiling. LED, so isn't it? Huh? Isn't it LED? Yep. What did I say? Fluorescent. Oh. So these are actually LED. There's a little driver that goes up in the ceiling to connect your wire to. And then the LED light is uh, pretty small. So for us, it's a little unique because we don't actually wire anything up yet. We have to take these wires like this and we have to have them in the vicinity of where that hole's gonna go. So we take our hole saw, we make the right size hole, be it four inch or six inch. We reach up, we find this wire, we pull it down, we hook that driver to it, stuff everything up in there and we're done. So we'll lay that out. You'll notice right here behind Sue, we've ran our 14.3 for our uh, ceiling fan. So it's got a red wire, I think you can see right there. Um, basically, when I do ceiling fans, I always put a second switch in and I always run three conductor wires so you don't have a pull chain for the fan. You can turn it on over there. You'll notice that in this case, the customer has a lot of stereo equipment. So we've done a lot of receptacles on that one wall. They're not high draw. They're just a lot of devices and you didn't want power strips. Also, one thing unique to this project is we're doing solar on the roof eventually. And we're going to use a Sunny Boy 6-ish kilowatt inverter. And this customer wants it in his upstairs living room where it's easy to see, you know, and, and see what it's doing. So we've run our 10-3 up here to give us the ability to wire the AC up to that. The DC will be done on the outside of the building and conduit will come through the inverter. So a lot of those little things that we talked about the other day, you know, one of the things that I want to point out is like when you, when you come out of your box, you need to have a staple pretty close to the box within three or four or five inches and don't make sharp bends in the wire. You know, you have a little bit of radius, leave yourself a little slack, run your wires, don't dry the staples up so tight that you deform the wire. That's another common mistake I see. You know, you don't want this shorting out in the wall later. Another thing we do is on this box here, you'll see we went by the box and looped up into it. I always bring my power wires into the bottom of a switch box and my light wires into the top. So like in this case, you'll see there's two wires because we have a, a fan, a light, and some recessed cans. And then the power comes in the bottom. So that way when you come back later and the painters have sprayed the walls and everything is white inside and it's maybe a year later if you're doing this, you know, in a normal scale, you're not uh, trying to remember what you were thinking. Here's another example of that. There's two wires coming in the bottom of this box, power in and power out to another light. And then my, my light comes in the top of the box here. Receptacles heights we talked about but one of the things that you'll run into is vanities and countertops and you know check around if you're doing something odd get it beforehand or measure it in our case we know that 44 inches to the top of a switch is a good height for a standard vanity so we'll end up having a gfci receptacle and a light switch for a light over the vanity this will be the only thing on this circuit it'll go all the way back to the panel we'll duplicate it down in the next bathroom and that way if somebody plugs in a 1500 watt hair dryer up here and one downstairs, they're not tripping any breakers. And then we move on to our light switch. In this case, is a little unique. We're putting in a fan heater light combo and it draws, I think 1300 watts. So it needs its own dedicated circuit all the way back to the panel too. So this bathroom actually has two 20 amp dedicated circuits right here. And we're gonna have a switch for the light, a switch for the fan and a switch for the heater in here. 
Uh, the other thing to think about is bathroom ventilation. As I told you, we're going to have a fan. We'll get that vented out before the insulation happens. In this case, this, this job is going to be spray foamed, and maybe we'll bring you over and see if we can get a little video of that as it happens. Uh, but once the spray foam goes in, you're kind of committed. You know, it's hard to really go back and alter things. So these are things to think about. Um, smoke detectors, we haven't done those yet, but we will. In this case, it's a little hard to mount the box right now because everything is the wrong height for the box. And what I mean by that is that if you look at a box and a piece of strapping and a two by four, we know the box has to stick out a half inch, right? If I mount it on my studs, you see I don't get a half an inch. If I mount it on my strapping, I get way too much. So what we're going to do is we're going to reach up there and we're going to screw another piece of strapping on top of the strapping, and that way we can nail it into this and be the right height for our smoke detectors. So that's where we're headed now. We're going to finish this up. We're going to finish pulling our last home run from up here. We just pulled our home run for this. We're getting ready to pull our home run for the lighting and heat in this bathroom. And then we've just got to do tidy up all the boxes. You'll notice too, um, a word of advice from me is to actually make your box up ahead of time. So take your time, wire not your neutrals together, crimp your ground wires, so that when you come back, when you pull the wires out of that box, you're going to have two black wires and a ground wire. And you land those on your single pole switch and you're done. That way, again, you're not thinking about what you were thinking about now. Because I don't know about you guys, but for me, by the time I get back to put these devices in, I've done several other projects, and I may not exactly remember what I had on my mind. The last thing I want to leave you with in closing today, before we let you go and we move on, is when you're ready to put these wires in the box, like this, the common mistake I see, and trust me, you don't want to do this, is they'll take this wire like this, and maybe Sue can get right in here close, you can see what I'm doing. But they'll take this wire and they'll roll this wire into the box like this. You get that right back out of the way like that. Looks really good, right? Sheet rockers can come in and hang the sheet rocker over this. If you've ever watched a professional sheet rocker, they have a tool called a roto zip. And it's a really high speed drill motor, if you will, with a spiral cutting bit on the end of it. And what they do is they mark on the floor where the center of this box is. They hang their drywall, they stick the roto zip in the box, go to the edge of the box, and they come around it, and they zip around the box, and the sheetrock falls in. So when they come across that, they may hit those wires. Now if they hit that black wire right there, where my fingers are, let me pull that out. You see how far back they would have nicked that? There's nothing much I can do to that now. I can't, you know, I can't cut that off. I can't salvage that. But if you accordion them into the box, so fold the bottom down against the box, Fold the top into the box, and you fold them back like an accordion like that, and then when they hit it, they're hitting the end of the wire. So if they hit that wire now, they hit it right there, and you see when I pull that out, I'm going to cut that off, I'm in good shape. So that's, that's a really important one. Uh, the other thing you can do is if you're folding them in in different sequences, like I'm going to make my grounds up, I'm going to twist them together, I'm going to crimp a ferrule on, I could leave them out, I could put my grounds in last, and that way if they nick my ground, they're not taking the insulation off of it. So that's one of those things that I just wanted to point out because that I see that a lot on people that are just getting into electrical because it's much easier to roll that wire like that right back into that box. You see how easy that is? But then if they do nick it, they're nicking it usually at the very beginning of the wire where it's hard for you to repair it. So that's something I really wanted to point out. We're back on the job site today. Um, you know, we've done most all of our rough in. We're tidying up a couple things today. We wanted to bring you around and show you what we've done to get ready for insulation and ultimately drywall. We've got a little bit more work before drywall. but So we've uh, mounted all of our boxes, pulled all of our wires. We'll show you some tricks and, and secrets on that. Um, you'll notice we've got our fire stop in the holes. So anytime you penetrate between floors, we, uh, we like to put fire stop in the holes. And, you know, we've just done all of our receptacles. We've done our ceiling fan light, our smoke detectors. What we've done, I think we showed you this already, but we may not have. We've done all of our boxes up. So when we come back after the drywall's done, we can reach in and pull stuff out like that. And we know that that's a three-way switch and we know this is a single pull switch. Ground wires are in there that we can grab real easily. That makes it real easy when you come back not to forget where you left off. 
We like to take notes as well, that helps. And video, you know, this video actually, like we'll come back through and we'll do another video on top of this one where we use a tape measure and Sue will video me and we'll, uh, we'll remember where all of our wires are for our little LEDs. We've got our fan in, um, yeah. Switches and receptacles in the bathroom. And we've also marked the floor where there's going to be recessed LEDs so that when we come back, uh, it's a little easier to remember what we were thinking. We'll document it real well. One kind of fun thing we did with the homeowner to kind of visualize was not just the marks, but we had these donuts that the plumbers left from drilling their holes. And we set them out where lights would be in the ceiling. So we've got our wall of receptacles. Uh, I think we mentioned this, but the homeowner has a lot of stereo equipment, vintage stereo equipment. That's what this whole wall will be, reel-to-reel, -reel, tape decks, everything. Um, we also have our big wire here. This is going to be for our Sunny Boy inverter, which will go right here. Um, this is 10-3 uh, down to the main breaker panel. And then, of course, the PV wire will come into the Sunny Boy. And other than that, it's pretty straightforward wiring. We've got all of our receptacles. We've done our three-way switch with our blocking. So you remember in the, in the video where we did the boxes, we showed you how easy it was to deform that box. And that one little screw makes that solid as a rock. Again, all made up. We have put a outside receptacle. You see the little daylight hole right there. When the siding goes on, we'll mount our outside receptacle out there. This is a second-store balcony, so we wanted to have a receptacle out there for you know outside power. And we mounted the FM antenna up in the attic and brought that down to a box for his stereo equipment. And we've, uh, yeah, that wraps up the upstairs. We come downstairs. We have our switches, as we talked about before, keeping that flow so we don't have to back up. We can shut off our stairwell switch there and turn on our living room switch. Again, a few more receptacles, a couple switches for some recessed cans. Same thing over here. We've done our three-way switch. We've put a block in. That way when the spray foam guys spray it, it doesn't push it out. You know, the sheetrock doesn't move it. This is going to be all spray foamed, five and a half inches. You see the plumbers have gotten started. Again, kitchen. So this box will have a receptacle and a switch for a couple cans over the range. Receptacle, 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 receptacle and a switch for a can over the sink. And then that's a refrigerator receptacle. Um, and then just convenience receptacles. Basement light switch, which we haven't got them working yet. We will uh, we'll get to that when we get power here. And then again, living room light switch and hallway. So we have a little hallway here. We'll put a light in here. But this allows us to kind of go from here to out the front door, you know, however you want to control that living room light switch. We can turn the living room light switch on from over there by the bottom of the stairs, from here coming out of this bedroom, or coming in the front door. And that's it. You know, pretty straightforward. Some of the things that you'll notice is uh, it might not look as neat, but I like to leave a lot of wire. I like to leave a nice loop. I don't like sharp bends in my wire. Actually, it's against the code, too. I forget the actual radius, but I think it's one and a half times the width of the wire. But this way, if there's ever an issue here, too, of course, not in this case because it'll be spray foam, but with fiberglass, you can actually pull some of that wire up through the staple. And uh, the other thing I'll point out is every now and then you'll see a nail like this where it's missed the uh, stud. And we all do that when we're framing. It's usually worth the effort if it's anywhere near close to your wire to go ahead and take that nail out um, or bend it over. You just want to make sure that when you're running your wire, you're not actually like stapling it right tight to something that's going to poke a hole in it and short it out later. The other thing to note is that you have to look at your code, but I believe it's inch and a quarter right here. If you're closer to the surface than that, we have to put a nail plate on here so nobody can put a screw into that wire. In our case of two by six walls, we're in really good shape. So that's about it. What we're here today, we're... Uh, we came back today, um, we're going to put the 2x4s on the concrete before they spray foam because they're going to spray an inch of foam on the concrete wall. So we're going to put our three 2x4s on there to mount our plywood on for our breaker panel in the basement. And we're going to stub our conduit in from the meter socket, which we'll show you outside here in just a minute, to the basement so they can spray foam the sills down there and we don't have to worry about digging through their spray foam. 
So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get going on that and we'll bring it back and show you as we do it. It's pretty cold outside. Um, we're just going to go ahead and get that drilled in and then we'll give you a tour of the service. So hang on while we get that going and we'll be right back. All right, so now we're outside and we're going to take a look at the service here. We've, uh, the contractor has put this panel on the side of the house that he's wrapped in the aluminum coil stock that matches the trim of the house. And we've mounted on that with our top of our hole about four and a half to five feet above grade. We've got a ground rod there and about 14 feet away we've got another ground rod over there. We've got our grounding block and then we've got our mast on the side of the house and our point of attachment. So that way it's all ready. The contractor does have to wrap the uh, riser board I put on, but we can release the clamps and do that as he's ready. So now what we're going to do is we've got to get it drilled into the basement and uh, we're going to use an LB to go from the bottom of that. Yeah, something like this. So we'll get that done. We'll bring you back. So we'll get that done and we'll bring you back when we have... Uh, have everything ready to go. We'll get some light down the basement, show you what we've done, mount the electrical panel. And then of course, we'll bring you back and show you when we get ready to put the devices in the house. That'll be another uh, another good video to do when we start doing that. So we're gonna wrap this video up now. Um, any questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe.